Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be showing you something pretty cool. I'm going to be giving you guys a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create this awesome sword fight animation. You guys can go off and do a lot of cool stuff with this. It's actually a lot more simple than you may be thinking. Um, this is something that even a beginner can pull off and it's not going to take a large amount of time. So here's what this looks like rendered out. And I'm going to be showing you how to do this using basic models. If you'd like, I recommend you check out my tutorial talking about where to find some cool assets that you guys can use if you want to create some more in-depth textured looks. But in this tutorial, I'm going to give you all the fundamentals in terms of the animation, in terms of setting it all up, in terms of getting the sword in there. Also, this is a clip from an upcoming music video that's going to be coming out. In some of my next tutorials, I'm going to talk about how I implemented some different plugins to get the specific look, as well as I'll show you some more behind the scenes of some different things um, with that entire music video as a whole. But anyways, if you guys are new here, here, consider subscribing joining the community since my past two videos have involved cinema 4d my next my next couple of videos are going to be more around the range of Adobe Premiere After Effects and I'm also planning on putting out that, that music video camera setup that I've been planning for you guys as well but anyways let's get right into it we're gonna create a new project here so we can start from scratch and I'm just gonna go over to my settings and make this 1920 by 1080 I'm just gonna use a basic little model of a man that we can get for free from something like turbo squid so let's hop on the internet and we're gonna do this from scratch. So I'm gonna go to turbosquid.com and I'm just going to look up a man model. If you guys want, you can look up an actual samurai model, model or whatever it is you'd like to apply this to. In terms of price, I'm just going to click on free, something like this. So just very basic. Um, important here, we wanna make sure that whatever model we're downloading, it's in a T-pose so that we can actually use something to animate this and get all those cool sword fight animations. So once you find something similar to this, if you'd like, I'll leave a link to this below. Go ahead and just click download. And in your downloads here, you're gonna wanna click show all and you're going to want to download a actual FBX version of this. Now there's no FBX involved in this download, just a C4D. So what we can do is we can just download this little C4D version. If you wanna make it easier, just make sure you're looking for a model that does come as an FBX. So in fact, this actually does come with some FBX files involved in the folder. If not, you can just open up one of these C4D things and then export as an FBX. Go ahead and test some of these out and try and create some of these animations. So we're gonna hop over into mixamode.com and I'm just going to log in and you can log in with your normal Adobe account, which is great. So you can just link that. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna click upload character and I'm going to go to select character file and I'm gonna go ahead and just open up one of these little 3D object FBXs test that out and see what that's looking like within Mixamo. And if you guys didn't already know, Mixamo is a great site in terms of finding pre-made animations that'll apply onto rigged characters. And we're gonna be using this to create all of the sword fighting animations. They have a bunch of really cool ones which we can use and pick from, so you're not gonna have to actually animate that from scratch. Now the FBX we used is actually fully rigged, so it's already automatically put together. Sometimes it may just show you a T-pose and you may have to select the joints and then it'll auto-rig. So at this step, we can go ahead and click next and it's uploaded so we can click next again and from here we can go ahead and just choose any animation that is actually available here on the left and it'll actually apply to our 3d model on the right so let's go ahead and look up sword fight and here is a bunch of cool little animations that we can use i'm actually just going to write sword to make it a little bit more broad and here's some better ones so we have this giant great sword slash here going on um i'm pretty sure the one that i used in the original we got this little sliding attack which looks super cool but what i recommend you guys do is you go ahead and find some of these that you like and then you click download also keep in mind pay attention to where your figure's hands are because that's going to be important um, depending on the model that you are using you may have to kind of change around the character arm space but when you already click download Frames per second, we're gonna make that 60. Um, click with skin, FBX, download those. I also recommend you create a new folder and I'm just gonna name this Sword Fight Animation Tutorial. And um, this is useful because you can just place all of your assets in one area. So I'm gonna save that there. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and find another animation that we can use onto the other person who's battling this character. So go for something a little bit more basic and less spinning and flashy. Also, you can download this giant greatsword pack, which is just gonna give you a bunch of animations. That is an option as well. So let's go with this one, greatsword slash. We get the nice little step hit and then step hit again. And we're gonna click download and keep it like that as well. And we're gonna download that to the same exact folder that I was talking about before. And now with those two animations, let's hop back into Cinema 4D and we're gonna go ahead and import those into our little scene here. So let's go to File, Merge Objects, select one of those and click Open, and then click OK. And what you're going to see is now what we have 
is our animation placed within here. If I click play, you're going to see that go through looking great. And just so this isn't a businessman, I'm actually just going to open up this null object and I'm just going to delete the texture off of there. And I'm going to go ahead and just place some normal black texture here. And like I said, in terms of texturing, you can look up any tutorial. You can use something like Substance Shader. Depending on what model you're using, you may be able to find a texture that you can throw on there to begin with. It may actually come textured already. So we have our first model in there. Let's go ahead and throw in our second model so that we can kind of see them interacting with each other. So let's do the same exact thing. File, Merge Objects. And last time we used Great Sword Slash. This time let's use Slide Attack and open that up. Click OK and then OK again. OK, so let's go ahead and just rename these. I'm going to double click, name this figure two and then figure double click figure one. So let's click on figure two. And what I'm going to do is on frame zero, let's go ahead and just place this at the beginning of the timeline. I'm going to use these little axes to kind of just move this. And whenever I play, this is actually pops back to normal. An easy way to fix that is let's click on figure two and just click Alt G to null that. And now we can actually um, change things around and rotate them and then move it back. And whenever I play it out now, it should actually stay in place, which is great. So we'll play that through. And here's what that's looking like. It already looks like they're kind of interacting with each other. I'm going to go ahead and open that null and then just get rid of the texture on there as well. Go ahead and drop the same little basic texture on here. Now let's go through this animation and he's a little bit further back. So let's just move him up a tiny bit, play that and maybe a little bit. So just make your little adjustments to kind of fix the placement of everything so that you can really get them slashing through each other. Now, if you want, you can also hold down Alt and rotate around to really see um, where they are lining up. Also, what we can do is I can change my layout from startup to animation and I can actually grab figure two and I can move him a tiny bit back so that he just starts a few frames late. That's also an option. That way you can really manipulate the timing of everything. So let's go back into our normal startup. And like I said, with the timing being manipulated that way, it's going to look a lot more smooth. So that's a way you can really change things up. And if you don't want to have him just kind of standing still, you can just start from frame number five whenever you're rendering things out, which I'll show you near the end of this. So we have the animation pretty much set up. We have the timing down. Now all we really need to do is just put the samurai sword in their hands. And this is pretty easy as well. So I'm just going to click file save. Now I'm going to go and bring in some actual sword assets. Now the ones that I used for the original rendered out version, I'm going to leave a link to those below. Thankfully, it's actually just a cinema 4d project file and it includes two um, katana swords, which is great for this. So for now, let's go ahead and just hide um, the second katana so that we only have the first one. We're going to use these axes to kind of place it, do everything. Let's actually go back to our first frame that we're starting on. So frame five. We're going to rotate this around using just the little rotation tool up here. And this is pretty huge. This is way bigger than his body. So I'm going to click on that first katana. I'm going to go down to where it says coordinates. And let's make this something around maybe like 0.5 for the X, Y, and Z. Maybe make them 0.7. And we're going to go ahead and just readjust these axes. And make sure you're holding Alt and you're really positioning this correctly at all angles so that there's not an angle that's not aligned. Also, take your rotation tool. And just make all of your little adjustments I'm going to reduce these a tiny bit once more. So 0.6 is I think is a good is a good scale for this. Now with that aligned in our character's hand, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open up figure one. So we have it properly aligned on this frame. But if, but as you guys can see, if we click play, it's just going to stay there in place. So let's go back to frame number five where this animation starts. And I'm going to open up figure one which is this guy right here. I'm also going to open up this little um, thing. This is root. These are all the joints that make up the animation spline. Pretty much. You can see it here. This is what's used for animating. And this is basically just the skeleton of our animation. So I'm going to open these up until I find his right hand joint. So open up spline, open up uh, his right shoulder because you see this is his right arm open up his upper arm, right? Open up his lower arm, right? Until you see his hand right here. So hand, right? Now we're going to go ahead and take Katana one, which is in his hand. And I'm going to drag that and place it as a child of his right hand. And that's it. 
now that it's a child of the right hand it's going to stick onto his right hand just like that which is super simple super cool looking so let's zoom out a little bit play that now it's actually looking pretty good here but sometimes what you'll have to do is create some keyframes for the rotation of the sword so let's slide through so for example if you don't want the sword to be placed like this at this keyframe what we could do is go back to our beginning keyframe so keyframe 5 we can click this little auto keying button right here to create some keyframes move over to where we want the sword to be placed a little bit better so maybe right here and then we can go ahead and actually take our rotation tool click on our katana and we can just fix it so something like that so now with that keyframe created you may need to go in and just kind of finesse some of these keyframes you can also move it around just to make everything perfect so that it's in its two hands that is the way that we can actually finesse this animation to the point where it's looking exactly how we want it to look and like i said using those keyframes you can really adjust everything to be perfect take it however you'd like keep in mind that every time you're doing this it's creating a keyframe which you can see here and if you want to move those keyframes i recommend you change your layout from startup back to animation and you can go ahead and move those around however you'd like all right, so I think that looks pretty good, especially for the perspective we have here. I'm going to turn off auto keying for now so that nothing gets messed up. And let's go ahead and just play that so that we can see. Bam, bam. Now we can move on to the next katana in this guy's hand. Also, remember to follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, if you guys would like to share whatever you make from this tutorial. I always love seeing the way you guys interpret these tutorials and the cool things you guys can create. So tweet it to me or send it to me on Instagram and I'm gonna check it out and give it a like. All right, so we have our katana within our first hand. All we need to do is, like I said, repeat the steps and place our katana within our second hand. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna repeat the steps that I just showed you. We're gonna take our second katana, so double click these two dots to show it in our editor once more. So if we go to coordinates, all I did was make each of these 0 0.7, so like that. Now we can go ahead and take this second katana and move it on each axis to be in the position that we want it. It looks like he's holding that with both hands, which is good. And let's go ahead and create a camera for this as well. So I'm just going to click a camera here and you can lock it into place with this button. And if you want to move, if you want to move around freely, you can just check it off. And then if I rotate, you'll see this is where a camera is. And the cool thing about this camera is let's go ahead and check back into place. If you want, you can use that same little tip I showed you before to create an auto keyframe and maybe um, just zoom in or do whatever you'd like with the camera. So if you want with our camera selected, we can just zoom in. It's going to create a keyframe. And now when we play that through, we have our camera just slightly zooming in, but let's worry about that later. Let's go ahead and get this uh, sword into his hand first. Moving back to frame five, that's where our first keyframe should be. Go ahead and open up figure two, and then let's go ahead and open up our root, which is our actual joints. Open up hip. I'm gonna extend this just so you guys can see a bit better. So we're gonna go to spline, that's where his spine is, and we're gonna open up his right shoulder, actually his left shoulder, because we're putting it in his left, in his left hand this time left upper arm left lower arm here it is left hand right about there so take our second katana marked katana dot one and put it as a child of our left hand so just drop it like that play that out bam now we have that sword in the left hand of our second actor and we can use the same exact little technique to kind of finesse it um, however we like so let's go ahead and select the auto key button Let's move in a bit. Maybe we want to rotate this a tiny bit at this position. We can go ahead and do that. Everything is matching up the way you want it to. So we'll make some little keyframe adjustments there. And that's looking good. So we have it cleanly swinging through each other. I think that looks pretty cool. And to wrap this all up, let's go ahead and just make that little camera animation. So let's select our camera. Let's go ahead and turn auto keying on move maybe to right here and we'll get a nice close in action shot if it doesn't make a keyframe you can also make a manual one like this now it should go from this camera position to close up in the action just like that so looking pretty cool um, i'm pretty sure this wraps up the tutorial for the most part like i said just showing the fundamentals if you guys want just watch some other 3d tutorials talking about um, how to find some cool models texturing using things like substance painter to really create some cool stuff combine it with this tutorial talking about the fundamentals of animating it using mixamo uh, also placing the sword in the hand some cool little keyframe and camera techniques 
you guys can create some really awesome stuff. Like I said, in the next tutorial, I'm gonna talk about the full breakdown for the music video that I created this for, as well as we're gonna talk about binding this with some awesome plugins within Cinema 4D to create some really cool looks. Whenever you want to render this out, Let's go over to our project settings once more. We already have it 1920 by 1080 from the beginning. Make sure this goes from, um, let's click all frames to start. Let's make this starting at frame five because that's where we made our starting point. And you guys can render whatever renders you have, standard, physical, Arnold, Octane, whatever it is you wanna do. For save, make sure you go ahead and create a folder. So I'm gonna go back here to my original folder that I did create, Sword Fight Animations, and I'm going to make a new folder called render I'm gonna click open that rendered folder and I'm going to name this sword fights click save and now this is ready to render and if you guys want you guys can go ahead and like this you can do whatever whenever you do want to render it also another cool option you can go to your edit settings go to save and you can render with the alpha channel so that you so that this can be transparent maybe you can put it in real live footage or whatever it is you want to do now you're ready just click this render to picture viewer and it's going to start rendering to that folder just like that also quick tip once you do have all of these rendered out what you do is open up that folder where all those little tiff sequences are rendering to so let's go back to that folder. So here's my render folder. Here's all the images that are being rendered out as you see with the alpha um, missing so that it's all transparent. We can open up something like After Effects and in After Effects what we can do is we can create a new composition. Make sure that's matching all the settings you created in C4D. So 24 frames per second, 1920 by 1080. Click OK. Right click in your project bin, go to Import, Multiple Files. Go ahead and find that folder once more that has the rendered out version of what we created, the sword fight. Double click, so here's the render. Click on your first frame, make sure a TIFF sequence is checked, import as footage, bam, click OK, click done, and then just drop it in here and you have it. And it's like I said, with that alpha channel, and like I said, with the alpha channel, this is actually transparent, so I can create a white solid in the back like that and place it behind our footage and bam now we have it in front of a background so now we have it in front of our background we have it within after effects so we can go ahead and add any cool little effects if you guys need some cool effects check out my website we've got some really cool presets that are actually very affordably priced um, stuff like glowing flickering place in some sound effects we have some we have a great sound effect pack you guys can couple with this so if you need any assets for the post compositing parts within premiere and after effects like i said check out my website mediamonopoly.co like i said earlier send me whatever you guys create on instagram and twitter underscore max novak on instagram at max novak youtube on twitter as well as like this video if you did enjoy it helps the growth of the channel a huge amount consider subscribing if you are new here anyways guys thank you so much for watching and supporting and i'll see you guys later Thank you